Welcome to Taking the Higher Road, a driver reach and freight waves production. I'm Leah Sheva, President and CEO of the National Transportation Institute. In Jeremy's absence, I'm excited to be back with you to host another exceptional leader to the podcast today. On this show, we interview industry experts and thought leaders who bring their insight to the driver life cycle as we discuss the industry's greatest challenges, driver recruiting and retention. Your feedback is very important to us, and your kind reviews keep us on the hunt for more great talent to put in front of you. Please remember to rate and review Taking the Higher Road, especially if I hosted, on whatever platform you are using to listen. Today, we welcome to the show a man who wears many hats, albeit not today. Anthony Buck, VP of Sales and Marketing at Long Haul Trucking, is a man of many talents and many roles in his company, and he's also written a trucking theme Christmas book for children that should all tuck into stockings of our loved ones this year. Beyond his writing skills, Anthony manages several departments at Long Haul, including steering the company's driver recruiting and retention programs, all of which we'll dive into on today's show. Anthony, I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Taking the Higher Road. Thank you so much for having me, Leah. It is wonderful to be here with you today. Well, we're going to touch briefly on how we met because it involves your book, How Chris and His Truck Save Christmas. Lindsay Trent of the Next Generation and Trucking Association sent all of our board members a copy last year, and I loved it for Christmas. So much so that obviously I want to spread the word about it far and wide. No spoilers, but tell us a little bit about the book and what it's about. Oh, I'd be so happy to. So uh, this book is all about a young boy who has five best friends that are all trucks. They love adventure. Uh, they love working as a team. And with a little bit of Christmas magic and the help of five tractor trailers, they're able to save the day when they find Santa Claus broke down in the woods. Well, I'm already smiling ear to ear. Um, you know, I love anything related to the next generation in the industry, uh, related to kids, and certainly anything that brings Christmas cheer. What inspired you to write it? Like, where'd you get the idea? When did you say to yourself, hey, I'm going to turn this into a children's book? Because I think you published before you even had a kid, right? Uh, um, so very, very little. Just a, just a little bit of writing and the first opportunity I really get to put some word to print and um, get it out to Shiri that was here at Long Haul. I was given the opportunity to help write some of our recruiting for both drivers, some of our marketing for potential customers. And we turned that into a magazine, um, which we're very proud to distribute to kind of highlight some of the wonderful people on our fleet. Um, I love fiction writing as a whole. And I was a new father at the time. So I just kind of thought, hey, why not take a run at trying to use uh, two of my greatest loves, right? My son and my career to come up with something for kids to try to get them interested in trucking. And it's at the very least, um, what little boy or girl doesn't love trucks? So at least try to infatuate them at that young age of saying, how cool can trucking be? And what an adventurous ride it can also uh, turn out to be for a career path. Well, what's the reception been so far then amongst those who have read it? You've obviously been busy distributing amongst your people internally, including and especially your drivers. What do they say about taking it home to their loved ones? And frankly, about having the author of a book about trucks and trucking um, be a part of the same company that they're involved with? Yeah, honestly, it's uh, it's super humbling to get any kind of positive feedback, which I've been so blown away by. Um, I would say the the most surreal moments are when somebody comes in and asks me to autograph a book and I'm like, well, it's probably worth less value now than it was when you first got it. But it's been just outstanding. Some of the drivers have even asked me, you know, when's the next book coming out? My grandkids absolutely love it. And uh, to to hear that they've been able to share it with their families has been nothing short of heartwarming. Well, speaking of, you wrote the book, obviously, and you worked with an illustrator who I think was a former driver related in the industry for sure. Tell us about the relationship and how you tabbed him to illustrate and what that process was like. Yes. So not a former driver. Um, actually, he is the uncle of our CEO, who is a former driver. And after I wrote it, our CEO was like, all right, this is this is good enough where we're going to let you kind of keep going with this this little passion project. And he introduced me to his uncle um, who did the illustrations and we worked really hard on it together for about seven months. Um, the illustrations are a ton of work and he put in so much effort to make them kind of what they are. And I think it's really helped create a nice finished product for the book. Yeah. I mean, not to take away from your talents, Anthony, but I can say uh, since I do own the book that actually 
uh, your illustrations take up more of the page than the words. So well, it's a good for, thing that your owner a knows thing. a guy who knows a guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in the world of in the world of kids books, right, which you and I both read plenty of right now, it's a captivating illustration that keeps uh, keeps the little ones a little bit more involved than necessarily the words, especially when I tease my son all the time. I'm like, you don't even know English yet. And I'm trying to <laughs> read this book to you. So It's really? very true. Our sons are very similar in age. And I can tell from my own experience that um, even a board book, which is the stage of life that we're in right now, because everything else gets destroyed. Uh, if there are more words than pictures, he is just not interested. So it's probably a very good thing that yes. the illustrations came in so well. Well, of course, everybody wants to know where can we pick up a copy to give to our loved ones this Christmas? Because I'm telling you, Santa needs to put these in the stockings this year. Well, that would be fantastic. There is an order form right on our company website, longhaultrucking.com, um, that you can go in. It's on the homepage. Uh, if you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see an image of the book. And then you can go in, submit your contact information, submit any number of books that you may want to order. I have plenty in my office ready to get mailed out. Awesome. All right. Well, get those orders in, everybody. Uh, we're going to switch gears here slightly and dive into some other topics around drivers, recruiting, retention, communication, which all in many ways tie into the discussion around your book. First, let's introduce you a little bit further to the audience. As I said earlier, you wear a lot of different hats at your company. You're in charge of marketing and operations, which includes being the voice of long haul your company in front of both truck drivers and in front of customers. You also manage the folks that manage drivers. From a high level, what are the biggest things you're working on right now? What are the things that you're working through at Long Haul, particularly from a driver-focused perspective? Um, so I personally work alongside um, a vice president of fleet who directly manages all of the drivers, and then I take a hand in managing our dispatchers. And so from that dispatch standpoint, our biggest thing right now is keeping a very positive working culture with our drivers and with our clients. Um, right. We always say that we have two sets of clients for our dispatch group. We have our drivers and then we have the customers that pay us all their freight. And you need to keep both happy if you really want to have a successful product to uh, continue to drive down the road. with. So true. I refer to them as internal customers and external customers, um, employees in general, but especially drivers, whether they're employees or contractors. Um, you know, they truly become an internal customer, if you will. So I totally agree. Um, and I'm sure in this environment, sticky, staying positive is is not only key to success, but it's also really important in terms of, um, you know, an influence from leadership. So one thing we talked about the other day in our conversation leading up to this show is how drivers have frankly had a really tough year. Base pay is up, yes, uh, you know, in general across the industry, but freight rates are down, freight volumes are down, and driver productivity is down, which is what feeds most drivers' paychecks. So how have you navigated those conversations with drivers in regards to pay? How do you keep them engaged in the current freight cycle? I'm sure it leans towards my my earlier question. And how can we as an industry communicate with drivers and keep them highly engaged during this time? Yeah. Um. So for my, for my responsibilities, when I'm working with the dispatch group specifically, it's just a constant focus of making sure we're doing everything we can to demonstrate our desire to work for our direct shippers that means so much to us and really keep pushing every single day to bring in as much work for our drivers as possible. Um, I know that our CEO, a former driver, and our vice president of fleet, former driver, they do a wonderful job of empathizing with our drivers when they talk to them about kind of the ups and downs of our industry, right? And we just want to make sure that those conversations can be supported with a maximum effort and a desire to do as very well as we possibly can, no matter what the current market Sam, situations may be. So just all about keeping your eye on the ball every single day for us and making sure that no stone goes unturned when it comes to finding another piece of freight for our drivers to go to work on. My company, Anthony, you and I have a lot in common. Um, maybe it's the Minnesota factor. I don't know. But um, my company, NCI, we have a blog and we have a newsletter um, and certainly a social platform. But I don't know if it was a post and uh, my team's going to really cringe when I say I don't remember which. But I think it was a post. Maybe it was an article blog that we put out. Um, but we talk so much about leading with empathy because I found in over 20 years working in trucking, 
Um, no matter the call, that's typically the primary component that's necessary for the conversation. Um, good or bad, happy or sad, folks really want to understand and feel like you understand them. So um, I love that you use the word empathy, and I also love that it's incorporated into the operation. Um, you do a great job with internal marketing efforts. And what I mean by that is after a driver commits to joining your company, and especially after they've started working with you, you continue to promote yourself to drivers, why they chose you, what they love about you, why they want to stay with you. Your company seems to do that. And you also have a really low turnover rate, aka a very high retention rate compared to industry average. What's your company's approach to internal marketing and how do you see it contributing to the stickiness of drivers at Long Haul? I think something really special about Long Haul is how our drive to do well for all of our drivers, um, no pun intended, is it really comes from the top down. Um, it starts with our CEO, our CFO, who together kind of lead our management team. And then we get together, we meet, we all have very shared values about what we want Long Haul to stand for and what we want to do to kind of promote the image of being a good trucking company that has some wonderful opportunities for drivers to go to work at every day. Um, and it, it always comes down to, and it really has since we, uh, since Long Haul started, is being a driver first company. Um, we take so much pride in trying to give our drivers different opportunities to go to work on, um, giving them the the time at home that they need, giving them that work-life balance that's so important to having a successful career out on the road, and then kind of watching how all of those really personal and very important attributes to having a long-term um, successful driving career add up to them wanting to be with us for many, many years because we make such a point of demonstrating and acknowledging how significant their personal successes are to ours as a company. And then the two can work together quite well when it comes down to, you know, all the modes. You, you said from the top down, and it struck me when I uh, sent you an email or received an email from you that it not only has your name and your title, but it also says owner. Um, and it makes me think of essentially peer to peer at your organization because long haul trucking is an ESOP company, an employee stock ownership plan, uh, which is, of course, an employee benefit plan that gives workers ownership interest in the company, meaning it's basically employee owned. And that's how employees also receive their retirement benefits in the form of company shares that build over time, become vested and the value grows and accumulates if, of course, you're doing everything right. So starting in just over a year, January 1 of 2025, a change in federal law requires retirement accounts like 401ks, IRAs, ESOPs, et cetera, to be opt in instead of opt out. And we could not love this anymore. Um, contributions need to automatically increase by 1% a year. NTI has provided a few resources on this topic this year. So if you want to learn more, you can find our blog at driverwages.com. But my question for you, Anthony, is more about the marketing piece again. Retirement programs are one of the least utilized benefits amongst drivers. And remember, we survey companies across North America, both private fleet and for hire fleet. This is consistent across the industry. So how can we change that? How do we market retirement programs to drivers in a way that makes them see the value in participation? Because contributing to a retirement account, especially if there's a company match, is one of the best things anybody, especially a driver, really can do for ourselves financially. So what's your advice on that? Yeah. Um, and so we're super fortunate, but we have the the ESOP, and then we also do offer 401ks um, where we do a company match there as well. But to get to the marketing question of it, you know, I, I mentioned earlier our magazine, um, The Clutch, and then we do a lot of online publishing as well. Um, and we've, we've tried to use both of those platforms to really help put out some very literal examples of how long-term sustainability or long-term um, commitment to one company, especially in ESOP, can pay off big rewards for somebody, for an employee in the long run. Having all of our company drivers be part employee owners is something that I think has brought some retirement savings um, opportunities for them to see that maybe they hadn't quite taken the time to realize before. I'll be honest, before I came to work for long haul, I was not at all well-versed on what an ESOP was or how it works. And boy, am I glad that I got the opportunity to learn about it since coming here. Because to your point, I think that there's a lot of different um, lot of different opportunities that are out there to be had that aren't always seen. And so they kind of go without any, um, 
without taking advantage of, I guess. And I mean that in the best possible way, right? Well, as I said earlier, I'm a board member of the Next Generation and Trucking Association. I'm a fierce advocate for companies individually and the industry at large to act swift, swiftly and decisively in finding avenues to reach younger generations and show them how valuable careers in trucking can be. So to that end, the National Transportation Institute tracks the age of drivers, and we're not making any progress on growing the number of young people in our industry. Maybe initial interest, but not in long-term retention. In fact, recent data shows the trend in reverse. Drivers are getting older, and we're not retaining those younger generations. You and I both have one-year-old sons. We are both passionate about the industry, about empathy, about what professional drivers do, and about promoting trucking jobs to the next generation of drivers. What are your thoughts on how we do that? What can we do differently? What should we be avoiding? What should we be doing that we're not? Pick any of the above. Boy, that is such a good question. And I'll be honest, probably one that I maybe spend more time thinking about than acting on if I'm being totally honest, because the conversation behind what can we do to draw the attach or draw the desire to become a driver versus how is it aligned with our marketing practice, I think from an industry standpoint, might have some opportunities to growth. Um, you know, I look at this next the 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 current generation of what late teens, early twenties, I think that there has been a shift in terms of people looking more at trade schools more at different opportunities other than just a four-year college degree, right? Which was when I was going through high school, the only choice that there was, right? It was, where are you going to college? I think we're getting away from that. But now I think it's, how do we look a little bit more about some of the core values of this next generation and how is it aligned with trucking and where can we kind of tie together some synergies to help help have one promote the other? Um, I don't know if you do much social media, I'm guilty of finding myself on there from time to time. And one thing that I keep coming back to and seeing a lot of is young people who take the time to go work freelance and kind of travel, right? They might live out of their van. They might even live out of their car. And I always kind of wonder to myself, well, why don't you just live out of a, a beautiful semi and you can work out on the roads, you can wake up in a different town every day. And, um, you know, there's a real spirit of adventure, I think, that comes with that. And maybe this next generation will find some find some desire for that adventure that comes with being a professional over the road truck driver. Um, I think there's just so many positives and so many opportunities and and different ways to look at what you really can accomplish as a driver, both for your family out at home, well, then also kind of achieving maybe some of that personal um, success, those personal goals, the idea of travel, the idea of not being bound to one thing or sitting at a computer all day and going out and having that adventure. And, um, you know, maybe there are some more opportunities to market how that would look behind the wheel of a semi uh, moving from coast to coast and taking in every bit of America's beautiful landscape all the way around the uh, country. Or even making six figures and being home every night because those jobs exist too. But we they still def- need drivers to get a CDL and be willing to do the work, including the labor that it takes sometimes to get to those six figures. Um, I want to pivot briefly and talk about dispatchers and diesel technicians. First, dispatchers. I've heard from so many drivers over the years who see transitioning into dispatch roles as a logical next step in career path. But one common issue that I've seen over my career is that drivers who were ambitious and had pride in their work and were good at those jobs have the same expectations for the drivers they manage once they move into office roles, whether it be dispatch or driver manager or something similar. Uh, They often find it hard to coach, encourage, manage drivers who don't share the same skills or character qualities. But your company has a lot of former drivers working in other roles throughout the organization and you still maintain a low turnover rate. What have you found is the secret sauce? I think we that won't that, tell anybody, by the way. It'll, I, just, I th- it'll be between us. I think long haul is very unique in the caliber of driver that it does hire. So a lot of those expectations are met with the with the professional drivers that come to work at our company. I truly believe that. Um, and I could definitely see through my workings at um other areas of our industry, how that might might not be the case, but we are so fortunate to have such a wonderful fleet of professional drivers that um, I, I think 
you know, kind of set the bar for for many throughout our industry. So I guess I don't have a great answer for you because All I think right. maybe we're spoiled. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I guess now more and more people are going to want to know the secret sauce that gets you in front of all of the highest of caliber drivers. Um, <laughs> as an industry, we stay so focused on drivers and we don't talk enough about diesel technicians, the value they bring to our companies, how we can better recruit and retain them, et cetera. What are some of the common topics you work in regarding recruiting and retaining diesel techs at your company? And how do other companies make diesel tech engagement and communication core to their internal marketing programs like you have? Yeah, I think um, diesel techs um, and and we have a, a shop manager, Rob Winter, who does a wonderful job managing that group of people. So I'm speaking a little bit from left field right now because I don't have a hand in managing what he does every single day in any sense of the word. But I have seen some of the very cool things that Long Haul has done to try to make a positive impact um, on kind of our surrounding community of diesel techs. Um, for three of the last four years, Long Haul's donated uh, Peterbilt 579s to different diesel tech colleges around our area to try to give a little bit of uh, upgrade in the types of technology that we're currently seeing out on the roads versus maybe what the kids had been wrenching on prior to. And I think that um, diesel techs, kind of like drivers, a lot of travels through word of mouth. And when you treat them well and you give them the opportunity to kind of self-promote within their circles, you see a lot of positive things come from that. It might be multiple people coming from the same school. Um, it might be, you know, somebody telling their buddies about it. But I think that that ripple that you create through your interactions with all of your employees does a lot for you and in, in what type of applicants you receive. And um, I think that really, you know, going back to that partnership with the local diesel schools, that's something that I'm so proud to even be able to write about and publish. Um, our CEO, Jason and, and our shop manager, Rob and Josh, our vice president of fleet, they've all taken such a hard stance in making sure that we're trying to get that latest, you know, most innovative technology in front of diesel techs that are coming through. And it really has, I think, done a nice job in terms of bringing some um, graduates into our doors. Yeah. Nurturing relationships with educators is uh, such a crucial component. And it's honestly not easy to do because we're also responsible for our key day to day, which is keeping the business moving, keeping the trucks on the road, right? We've got other yep. core responsibilities and really, truly caring for and nurturing that external relationship, whether it's your customers, uh, local schools, et cetera, those, you know, it can take a second uh, time or second turn, right, to the rest of our day to day. So that's pretty cool that they've been successful in doing that. And of course, uh, getting in a truck that, you know, looks like yours and maybe even still has your name on is good too. Um, <laughs> I have two more questions and then we can get out of here. The first is what's your next book about? Are you going to write one? When is it coming out? AKA, uh, you mentioned the two most important things in your life and Mrs. Claus was not one of them. When is the book about Mrs. Claus? Uh, the, yeah, TBD. <laughs> we might need to put one together. I could definitely see it. Um, a call for that and why it would need to become one. Honestly, I love writing so much. I probably could try to put something together sooner than later. And, and it, as long as the, as long as there's people that want to read it, we'll do it. Listen, I can even title it for you. And I want it dedicated to me, how Christine and her trucks saved Christmas dinner. There okay? you go. There we go. Christmas dinner. Uh, nice. You can almost cut and paste, just add a little, a female flair to it. That's um, awesome. All right. Last question. Just remember, I want to dedicate it to me. Okay. Last question. We spoke the other day about representation in the media is one of the key components of reaching the next generation of drivers and creating awareness of an interest in trucking careers. You've certainly done that with your book. What else do you think needs to happen in your opinion? I just think that there's a lot of really positive things going on in our industry that probably don't get talked about enough. Um, so whether that be getting in front of more students, going to job fairs, trying to kind of seek out that next generation of very smart, hardworking, um, polite professional to come and join our industry, getting in front of them is probably the biggest thing. I mean, I'll be honest, when I was going through college, I had very little inclination that I would be working at a trucking company one day. And looking back on that now, that's truthfully just because of a lack of education, you know, lack of awareness of what types of opportunities there were in that field because of 
what a vital role that it plays, how much of a, you know, how much of a size the business sector carries. So I really think that a lot of it is going to boil down to making people aware of all the different jobs, whether that be, you know, driving or working in an office or what have you. Well, Anthony, I want to thank you so much for joining us on Taking the High Road today. It was a great conversation, and I want to thank you specifically for all the work you do, especially contributing this amazing book and its sequel on behalf of our industry. Oh, thank you so much for having me on and giving me an opportunity to talk about long haul. Um, So passionate to be a part of this team and grateful for the opportunities that we have and we're trying to promote throughout our industry. And can't thank you enough for giving us the spotlight for a little bit. You got it. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And thank you for joining me on another episode of Taking the Higher Road. Remember, you can submit questions or comments, including those that appear in an upcoming Deeper Dive segment at podcast at driverreach.com. Don't forget to rate and review Taking the Higher Road on whatever platform you listen or watch. And until next time, thank you for taking the higher road.